you ever give up to? Well, it, I don't feel I've got a right when I don't like somebody or I disagree with somebody's doing. If if I should respect them, if they're above me, they're superior to me, I don't feel I've got a right to really, really tell you how mad that's, I am at that's, you. That's that's garbage. You're not jackety jackety. You're getting back into your safe corner. Well, quack, 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 that's quack, the way quack, it feels. Quack, quack, quack. That's what the safe corner feels like to me. Right. Now go back to your safe corner. Because we have to part very soon. You stay in your safe corner. You came out for a moment. You nearly met me. You could get a little bit angry with me. Now go back to your safety. I feel like you're telling me the only way you respect me as a human being if I'm aggressive and forceful and strong. Yeah, I feel like you couldn't even accept my... I'd be scared to death to cry in front of you. I feel like you'd laugh at me and call me a phony. I feel like you don't accept my weak side only when I'm yelling back at you or hollering at you. You mustn't cry in my presence. Well, I wouldn't even give you the satisfaction. Say this again. No. Say this again. I try not to. I try not to cry in front of you or show my weak spot for fear you'd jump on me again. Are you aware that your eyes are moist? I'm aware that I feel more choky, yes. I feel that... Could you choke me? Pretend, but not for real. Why not for real? Well, because I don't hate you that much. Well, you want to choke my tears back? You want me to choke you so you wouldn't cry? I'd like to, if I'd like to choke you, it would be to make you cry. I'd like to see you weak. I'd like to see you hurt and, and vulnerable. What would do this do for you? Make me feel like I'm, I have more of a right to be hurt and you wouldn't jump on me so quick. Would you jump on me if I would cry? No. Mm -mm. But I would jump on you if you would cry. You're sure of this? No, I'm not sure of it. Uh -huh. what, would, what would you like me to do if you were to cry? I was... Uh, uh, you're smiling, you're smiling something off. Well, because I got two feelings. I was going to say I want you to, I want you to love me and hug me. But then I thought, no, I don't want to. What's your objection? I'd be scared to be too close to you. Now we're getting somewhere. First you want to be close to me. Now you're afraid to be too close to me. This is what I'm saying, but... That's right. <coughs> now we got the two poles of your existence. But they're two different feelings. Close, I mean emotionally, but not physically. Yeah, yeah. But we've got the two poles of your existence now. Either far away in a corner, or be so close that you get melt into one with the other person. And apparently you travel between the two extremes. I do. You know what I'm thinking? When I am really hurt and really uh, upset about something, and I want someone to love me, like my girlfriend will do it a lot and she'll come up to hug me, I don't, I don't want it. Exactly. See? That's what I'm talking about. You cannot sustain contact. Okay, this is not garbage. What are you afraid if you were too close to your girlfriend, if you let her hug you? Um, the only thing I'm aware of is, like when I perspire, it embarrasses me that she'd feel how wet I am, and that she'd hold my body up close, and I don't know. Just are you aware of your facial expression, the kind of disgust yes. coming? Okay. Yes, I am. I do this more, please. Ugh. Again. It's icky. Again. I'm it's just icky. I can just feel what it is. I don't like it. Can you say this to me, Fritz? You're icky. No. No? What's your difficulty? Because I feel like if you really believe me, that would hurt your feelings. Oh, you must not hurt my feelings. Well... I thought I was so indifferent, as you said before, that no, nothing could touch oh, me. No, no. Now you suddenly discovered a way to touch me, isn't it? Well, you know what I believe? I believe you're the type of person, sort of like me, that you act like it wouldn't hurt your feelings, but it really would. You act strong, but you're, you're soft and vulnerable inside there, too. I think your feelings could be hurt, sure. But I don't think you'd show it very easy. What would I do? 
How would I conceal my feelings? By turning it back on me. <coughs> By oh. saying, now, what did you get from that, Gloria? You turn the whole thing back on me instead of showing how hurt you were. Now, can you see this to Fritz? How did you, what did you get out of this, Fritz? Say this to me. What'd you get out of what? What you just said, just your sentence. Sure, I know what you'd get out of it. If I said, what did you get out of this, Fritz? You'd say, nothing. It didn't bother me. It was you that did it. You still wouldn't let me know you were hurt. But I know what it would be if you told your true feelings that you didn't want to show your hurt, so you covered it up. Same way with me in the corner. Now, if I were hurt, if I would cry, what would you do with me? You would be, you wouldn't be so superior to me. You'd be more vulnerable and I could pacify you and make you feel better. You could hug me. Yes. And I could be the baby. Yes. Yes. I'd like that. You'd feel more on my level. I wouldn't have to feel so dumb with you. And the other way around, you would have to be my baby. She would cry. You would like to play the baby and be comforted and hugged and uh, poor thing. Well, I'd poor like that me. too. But I'll tell you something, Gloria. I think we came to a nice closure. I think we came to a little bit of understanding. I think we finished this scene, this situation now, right? All right. The demonstration was, in my opinion, uh, quite successful and consistent with my theoretical outlook. The avoidance of the genuine encounter manifested itself in three ways. The patient was first taking control by putting on a smiling, sophisticated, phony mask of oscillating between a pretense of being frightened and yet at the same time having me figured out. Thus being or believing to be fully in control of the situation. Secondly, she was withdrawing by fantasizing of hiding in a corner. Thirdly, she was blocking the real encounter of melting through crying, which then would have been the real emotional meaning of this meeting. The patient was capable of identifying herself with several fantasies she had projected onto me. She was, this was especially evident with regard to her initial denial for a need to be respected. The need for environmental support started to come out besides her need to get respected. It was verbalized in her wish to be cared for, rescued from the corner, and so on. I broke off the session when the first tears begin to appear. She began to play the role of the lonely child and apparently wanted to be hugged and comforted. But here too the assimilation of her projection began to work and she began to experience holding me like a baby. Apart from Assisting her and assimilating her in some projections, the main therapeutic factor was to show her the inconsistency of her verbal and non-verbal behavior. For instance, saying that she was frightened and smiling at the same time. A frightened person does not smile. Where I feared was in the direction of her embarrassment. Uh, this embarrassment was protected by her brazenness and anger. To get to her existence, existential embarrassment, we would have to work through and eliminate the phoniness. That is the ease with which we can superficially assume any role that is required for a specific situation. This pseudo-adaptation is her way of coping with life. This is about what I got out of this session.